today I am going to be showing you and of course my Cora how to make a VTuber with Live2D Cubism, which is also today's sponsor. So yes, I hope you're all excited. My Cora, are you excited? I'm very excited. So today we, at least for this lesson, we will learn about Live2D and the various use cases. We're going to learn proper format for like your art and art layer separation. And then we're also going to understand the logic behind each tool in the Live2D Cubism Editor's UI set Settings, which sounds like a really, really long sentence, but basically I'm going to kind of go over the interface and help Cora set up her entire like UI and get her PSD in. So what is Live2D? Live2D is a software that animates static images, usually anime style characters, which they don't always have to be anime style. And they do this to create a kind of like 2.5D movement. One particular use case is that Live2D is used in many different mobile apps, console games, and visual novels. You may have played a couple of games here and there that have used Live2D without realizing it. I know there's a really popular mobile game that frequently uh, has all Live2D models on their application. I uh, can't, I can't tell you the name of it, of course, because um, it's a very, uh, it, it's a very interesting game. <laughs> <laughs> Another use case for Live2D is that it can be used for VTubing via like live streaming or making other forms of content creation. There's a couple of things that you kind of need to know before we start getting into the whole Live2D process. The first thing is the actual art. Like I said, it's a static image and Live2D Cubism only accepts PSDs, which is the Photoshop document. Mm -hmm. There are two official image editing applications that have been confirmed to be able to load PSD files successfully in Cubism. Cubism's editor, that is Adobe Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use any of the other art programs that are out there. As long as it can export a PSD, it should be fine. It's just these are the two that's listed on the official Live2D website as the ones that have been the most successful. So for all of you at home, if you would also like to kind of follow along with us as I go through today's lesson, you're more than welcome to download Basechan. Basechan is free, so you can either look at the description underneath the video or you can scan the QR code right here to get your own little Basechan. It's free! It is free, yes, it, it's free. We're actually gonna open up PSD because there's a couple of things that I need to show you on there, but before we get into that, I wanted to give a couple of little quick art tips because I get a lot of people who ask me, how do I separate things? How, like, how do I know if what I'm, how do I even know if I'm doing the right thing and honestly I can't give you that kind of answer but I can at least give you some tips on how to set up your VTuber model art. My first tip is the left and the right. So I'm sure you all can see right here this is probably the opposite of like <laughs> how you're looking on screen. Normally like if you're sitting by a computer this would be your left and this would be your right for you but for your model and from your model's perspective it's flipped. So You'll see when we open up the PSD that the way you would name things is with left and right. And it's usually from the opposite sides of like this. So this would be your right side and this would be your left side. On to the next part. I have my second tip here. When you go to name your layers, don't use any spaces. I know that sounds really weird, right? Like for example, layer dash like space two. like don't do that. <laughs> also underscores are okay, but when you're going to name everything, make sure that you don't have your layers deeper than five levels. And what that means is if you take a look at the first example here, this is the first level, which is hands. The second level would be L and R. Then the third level would be this mesh. But then I have like an additional like layers here. So it's one, two, three, four, and then this is five. Like this one that's all the way down here in this little folder is five. And you will get a warning that talks about like, hey, if you do this within five layers and it might cause some weird bugs. So yeah, you don't want to have it way too deep like that. It, it's also unnecessary. It's like over organizing your files and it's not that necessary. And then my last little art tip is if you're not sure how many layers something should be, then think about the movement. Like I said, it's very similar to animation. So mm. if you're moving stuff, think about, okay, so I want to like turn my head how many parts are going to have to be separated in order to do that? Another thing that I would like to emphasize to you is make sure you merge your line art with your rendered coloring layer. There are a few exceptions to this. Just for example, if you have like a little bow, don't separate 
the line art and then the the colored like rendering part like don't make those two different layers merge it into one layer and that's fine there are some instances where you do want to separate the line art such as the face line art or if you want to have if you have like any tattoos or special clothing patterns you can put those on their own separate layers some hair textures can be separate on their own separate layers thankfully base chan is very very simplistic so there's not that many layers except for the eyes as you can see over here the eyes have a lot <laughs> that's just the eyes that's just the eyes yes oh my gosh <laughs> but that's because the eyes have so much movement that you have to do in mm -hmm. live 2d especially if you want to be expressive so now cora you can open up the application so before we continue okay we're going to open up the live 2d cubism editor here now <laughs> you probably open up live 2d cubism and realize that yours is in white mode and mine's yeah, I'm being flashbanged right now. Live to Decubism does have dark mode. In order to get into dark mode, you go into file. You're gonna, I'm gonna move my head. You're gonna scroll down to environmental settings. You're gonna go into general and then you'll see color theme and you can either choose light or dark. And it's gonna say the changes takes after restarting. You're gonna press okay and then you'll exit and then restart the application. And it should be in dark mode for people who want dark mode. Yay, congratulations! You have dark mode now! I did it! Welcome everyone to Live2D Cubism's editor application. Before we get started on the interface, there's a couple of things that we need to go over. We've opened up Live2D Cubism. Now, mm -hmm. you've already either chose your license, whether it's pro or the free version. You saw the little notifications, and now hopefully you're in dark mode, unless if you like light mode, because I don't know. There's nothing wrong with light mode! Psychopath behavior. It's not psychopath! behavior sometimes you if might you no there's no excuse mari if you like light mode i can't trust you girl i am literally a white-haired mo you know what never mind it does whatever what okay first, such... <laughs> actually first things first a little quick live to decubism like ui overview up here this is your menu bar this is how you can mm -hmm. navigate different contents in the live 2d cubism editor you have file edits you have show modeling animation form animation window and help you don't need to worry about these right now we will get to these eventually in other lessons but just understand like this is how you can navigate a lot of stuff okay now over here is your toolbar this is where um, we have our mesh generators, we have our deformer, our warp deformer, we have our rotation deformer, we have our little rotation, like mini rotation deformers that are used for specific things. We have our arrow tool, which allows us to select. We got the lasso, we got the brush. We also have the deform mm -hmm. path edit. This is a tool that we don't need to worry about right now. We will eventually get to something like this in the future. This is the deform brush tool that I mentioned. This is your glue and this is your art path tools. These are all tools that you can and we will most definitely be using in future lessons. For now, we're keeping it very basic. We only have to worry about two deformers and our art mesh today. So remember how I said earlier about why naming things is so important? Well, if you notice, I have lash three under my IL selected. And if you look right here, it's named correctly. And then you see this ID. Now, if I were to go over to the right side of that and I were to click on it, you notice how now on the ID says Lash 7. That's because they're um. both the same names when I had imported it. And so Live 2D's Cubism editor had to change the ID because you cannot have the same ID. They have to be different. And mm -hmm. sure, you might be thinking, okay, why do I care? Well, like, whatever. That kind of stuff is very important when it comes to like clipping IDs. Upload this into VTube Studio, for example, and you're trying to go through everything and figure out, oh, why isn't something working? And you just have everything not labeled properly. It just it saves you a lot of time to have your IDs and the naming and everything just named correctly. <laughs> yeah, saves you in the long run. It does. It really saves you so much time. Other than that... I believe that is everything that we kind of need to go over for now for the UI. There's other things about the UI that I will explain as we kind of go along, but this is kind of like a very general overview of everything. The next thing that we have to do is our little exercise where we're going to organize all of the files in the parts palette. I am not going to make us sit here and do all of that. <laughs> that is why I had prepared the... <laughs> The base chan level one, not level, lesson one, where I had already gone through and named these, except for the eyes. Those ones I, I kind of still forgot, so we will still do this. This is a very basic overview of draw order, and you can always take time depending on how your model looks. 
to go through and kind of mess around with it a bit more. But this is kind of like a general like base, at least how I go about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. The next part that we're going to do is we are going to make our art mesh. So want to make sure everything is opened up here. So you want to hit all of that with the little arrow. OK, so that op it automatically opens everything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. And you want to make sure everything is shown. So we actually do have to check the little mask layer again. So you want to hit that little eyeball for it. You want to make sure okay. everything is opened. And then you're going to hit Control A. Control A. Oh. And it selected everything. You're going to see, you just want to mm -hmm. double check that everything is selected. That's not the little folders themselves. You don't want the parts of that selected. You want just okay. the actual layer itself. So all of this is selected. So now... What you'll do is you'll go up to the toolbar over here and you see how the, this says auto? Yeah. You're going to click on that and we're going to do automatic mesh generator. You're going to hit this little pop-up that's going to be here and there'll be a preset. If you click on the mm -hmm. preset, you'll see standard, deformation little or deformation heavy. Just click standard. Okay. And look at that. You now have a cursed image of base chun. Congratulations, you generated the art mesh. Yay. Oh my gosh, that is very cursed. I love it. I'm going to show you how to set your texture atlas now. The okay. reason why I want to do texture atlas first is because we have been sitting here in the live 2D Cubism editor for like half an hour now. And um, I really want to save, but it won't let you save until you create the texture atlas. So ah. yeah, it would really suck if you were working on stuff for a while and then you didn't get a chance to save and then it crashed and that would be awful. So why don't we set our texture atlas real quick? You're going to hold control and then press T. These are shortcuts, Ooh. by the way, because like I said, you could go to the menu bar and like, you know, do yeah. the auto mesh and things like that. I like shortcuts. It's just a lot easier. And now this is kind of where the whole f your file size matters, because if we try to make a texture atlas on 1200 pixels and did a one one ratio of that, it's going to have to make these layers smaller and it's going to be really pixelated. And it's not going to look good. So you want the actual texture atlas to somewhat match what the file's PSD image size was. Okay. For the most part, sometimes there are instances where you might have multiple texture atlases. It depends on how many layers you have on your model. I try to keep it on just one. Personally, that's my preference. After that, you'll hit okay. And your okay. texture atlas is going to be generated. <gasps> wow. You want to like take a look at your texture atlas and make sure nothing is like touching. You want to make sure it's all kind of all happy and everyone has their own space. Yeah. And it all looks good. So you'll just press okay. And now your texture atlas has been created. And now you can actually save this. So if you hit control S, you're going to get this little pop up and you can save your file wherever you like. I made an actual folder for today's lesson. So now we get to add our little fancy deformers and start making this look more crazy and chaotic. <laughs> Yay, chaos. Let's start making the deformer hierarchy. This is where the whole child and parent relationship comes in and why it matters so much. Some people like to just select a bunch of parts that they just want to start working on and start modeling right away. And they kind of make their deformers as they go. I used mm. to do that. And then sometimes, like I said, I'd have this issue where I would try to like group deformers together and I'd get errors because I, I you can't change the position of like a child parent thing if they don't have the same parent deformer. So to save us some time, we're gonna make some like general basic deformers. Something that's very important about deformers is that first of all, if I started moving this, it's gonna start warping things. Mm -hmm. Now, if you hold down control and now try to do this, you're actually changing the size of that deformer without messing up the layers. Oh. And do you see how there's a grayed out box while I'm trying to move this around? Mm -hmm. That grayed box is your body warp Z. And it's showing you okay. that because body warp Y is a child of body warp Z. And you don't want the child deformer to be bigger than the parent deformer because it could cause some issues. Especially if you're making like video games and you go to export it. Having your child deformers bigger than the parent deformers can potentially cause some issues. So you'll notice that body warp Y is a little smaller than body warp Z. In fact, I actually might want to make it a little bit more smaller. So when you have all of these different objects here, you want to make sure that your deformer is covering 
the part it's supposed to. This is my preference on how I like to set up my general deformers. Again, some people just like to rig as they go. Mm -hmm. I personally have found it to be more efficient in the past when I have my general base containers. So that way things are a little bit more organized. You see how I'm kind of like naming things like what they are? This makes organization yeah. so much easier. Because I kid you not, I've looked at some files in the past where nothing is labeled correctly and you just don't know what you're looking at. It's kind of like spaghetti code. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. 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 This just, I know, and this is time consuming. I'm not going to lie. Like we've been sitting here for almost three hours now, just organizing our stuff. And again, it's because you're going to thank yourself later on down the road when you're trying to make adjustments or changes or add new uh, like colors or layers and stuff. And you're like trying to piece together through stuff. Or if you're in collaborations with another model or an artist, they need to know mm -hmm. what the heck they're looking at. And so you're <laughs> saving time for everyone by making sure everything is properly labeled. Now, that is all we're going to do for the deformer hierarchy. As we continue to work through live today, we're gonna we're definitely gonna create more deformers. Like, don't think this is like all the deformers we're gonna have. We're gonna have a lot of deformers. This is just I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> But it, I, I honestly, like, I like this. Like, this is an organization that I can get behind. You Yay! did it! You did it, Cora! You set up the you basics of Live 2D and understand the UI. Now we can begin rigging next time. Next time. Next time. Cora, with that being said, now, now that you finally got to work with it, like, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about Live 2D okay. Cubism? So my first impression, I, like, you know, kind of went in a little confident. Like, yeah, I got this. And after I'm like, holy cannoli, it is a lot, but it kind of gave me a better sense of like, there's a lot of dedication that goes into this and you can do a lot with this. And it kind of has me excited to, you know, start messing around with stuff and seeing what we can make and, you know, eventually maybe putting an actual model in there and figuring out that like, I, I, I'm super intrigued to kind of figure everything out. It's, it's got my interest peaked very much. I'm glad to hear it. that's actually awesome. Yeah. So with that being said, I'd like to just thank, first of all, Cora for being a wonderful student. You can go follow her on Twitter. It's my Cora not found. Same thing on thank YouTube. You, thank you. You're welcome. And on Twitch. I would also like to thank live 2 d for sponsoring today's stream. I'm actually really happy to be able to come up with this lesson plan. Now, this is the first time I've done something like this officially. So I hope all of you who are watching this got to learn like the basics of live to d and hopefully this is a lot less intimidating now for you and you're feeling a lot more confidence on wanting to dive in and start making some vtuber models i hope you're all excited for the next time we do this where we'll actually sit down and do some modeling so Cora, do you have any last final like words and stuff to give chat before we head off um don't be a baka yeah Remember, everybody, everything reminds you of something. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.